Okay, this uh, video is about how to do a player select. So what you do here, you choose what you choose a player you want. Say if I want to click on this one, click, then say select. Then you have this character here, and he's able to move. Uh, let me do it again. I choose this one, select, and you have that character. Let me do one more. So I choose this character here in yellow, click on that, and then select, and it's yellow. So let me show you how to do that. Alright, so basically you have in the room, the first room is this, room zero. Room one is a question mark with the room. Room three, room two, they don't matter. Let me, I'm going to delete these real quick. Delete this, delete this. So there should be only two rooms here. Let me, let me go back and demonstrate real quick. So let me click on this, select. Okay, so I have that character there. Let me go back and... Pink, yeah, okay, so I just want to make sure it's working fine with just the two rooms because I had some extra ones there which I didn't need. Okay, so in the room one, I have a question mark which is going to represent a character, character that you select. So that is called object player for the question mark. So you go into object player and you do a create, do a coded sheet. In the coded sheet, set it to self, and it says if global dot my character equals equals one, then choose the sprint player one. If global dot is my character equal equals two, then do do the sprint in x equals player two. Else, if global dot my character equals three, do the sprint in index player three. So. This is going to. This is if you, if you choose a certain character, doesn't matter who you you choose. It's going to do this code right here, and it's going to. So if you do, if you click on the first player, then it's going to do player one. If you do the do character two, it's going to do player two. So let me. I'll I'll go in more detail with this in a minute. So it's just basically a state a statement saying if you choose this character, then you're going to do this character here. If you do this character, it's going to do that character. So let me. So that's that, and this doesn't matter. This is only talking about the character movement. So you have all the character movements in the object player, which is that question mark. You have the left, you know, he, he moves left at 10 speed, goes right at 10 speed. So all the movements in the, the global um, code object for that question mark for the character and you set it to self if it's outside the room he goes to the next room if he hits the wall then you're gonna make him stop okay so then when you um then the, then we're talking about now we're talking about the button the select button so if you click on the left select button add event go to left pressed mouse events then do a coded sheet then it's going to state this this is the code for what I was just talking about so an object player well hold on an object player we have this code right here I talked about okay so this code right here pertains to when you select the player so if global dot my character is equal to one at least and not not and not too far so it's going to be like between one and six that's what it's saying so you have six characters between one and six that's what it, you can choose from you have 
you can choose from one to six characters and then it's going to go to the next room. So that's what the, that code's talking about. So first, you, the object player, you have one through six, see? So you start with character one through six here, and then you have the selection button, which is going to state that, okay, you have six options to choose from, make your choice, and then go to the next room. That's what it's stating here. All right, and then depth minus 50, and then you have your player image. So when you cl click on the player object, he represents global dot my character equals one. So that's where that code comes in at with object player. See, so my character equals one. So. my character equals one. So everything has to connect with one another for it to work with the code. So this one represents my character equals one for the red character here. Then for the object player two we have global my character equals two. And we go to object player three and it says my global character equals three and so on so everything follows suit so that the code works global dot my character equals four so when you click on a character the computer knows that you have chosen a particular character and you click on select so that way the computer knows which one you chose and jumps to the next room. And I believe there is a, um, a video that I watched on YouTube that I will give you a link to so you get more information from uh, that person because I may not completely explain everything to you but um, I'm showing you everything that um, it, it does so And then we have global my character equals five. Then the last one, same thing, global dot my character equals six. So each one has its own unique ID. So that way when you click on the select, you notice which one you chose and it jumps to the next room with that character. So this question mark becomes the character that you select. That's what's happening here. And it also has the movements inside that, that question mark for that character. And that's pretty much it. Um, let's see, what else? Is there anything else? So in the sprints, in the sprints I have player sprites. So that's where this comes in play at. So where it talks about an object player, it talks about sprint underscore index equals player one. That's talking about these sprites right here. I made a folder for it, and then this sprite's called player one. And so I just deleted the background on this image here. And that's the player that you chose. X and Y is 50. <clears throat> so then player two. So these are the actual players in the game. So when you click on the square for that player and press select then jumps to the next room, this is the character that you, you chose. If you chose the blue. Player 2. And player 3. And so on. And then this is the ground. So, and this is the wall object. So like I don't have the wall object in here, but you place the wall right here. So that way when he hits the wall, he just stops at the wall. He doesn't go off screen.
I'm pressing left and it's not, he's not going off screen. He just stops. See, direction, middle, speed zero. So that's it. So all the character movements are in the question mark on the main screen. If you go off screen, then it goes to the next room, but then all the character movements are in here in the question mark. And that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching.